Virginity, once regarded by many as something pure, chaste, and virtuous, a badge of honor and a symbol of innocence, has become one of the reasons for great suffering in the West. No longer is it seen as a virtue of self-preservation and an aspiration for many believers of the majority of world religions to aim for, such as the Christians to become more like Christ or the Buddhists to reach enlightenment and overcome the carnal animalistic desires of this realm. But now, virginity has turned into a label that segregates the top 1% of men and also the cause for discrimination and loneliness. And for some, it has even become the justification for inciting random acts of violence against members of the opposite sex. Hi everyone, my name is Koi, and today I'll be talking about my experience as a young man who has not lost his virginity in the modern Western world and why it isn't as much of a big deal as what most people have made them to be. <laughs> Most views of today, I grew up in a world that is molded by social media influencers, porn stars, and online gurus. The common narrative that is being spoon-fed to the young people of our generation is that your worth as a human being is dictated by how much money you can make, how well-known you are, how much of an impact or influence you have on society, whether collectively for better or for worse, that's debatable, and how likable you are, in short, how much people desire you. From the age of 12 and onwards, I was drawn into the idea of chasing these empty trains. I dreamt that one day I would be a famous rock star who makes lots of money and have an endless supply of women that I can use at my own disposal. I thought that was the peak of my being and a metric for defining how success I am is to be loved by many people as possible and especially by the objects of my own sexual desire. Woman. Boy, was I wrong. If you live your life chasing the validation of others, you are most likely going to suffer in the most meaningless and vain way imaginable. Okay, quick disclaimer, you're all listening to this from a virgin's perspective. Keep that in mind. Keep in mind also of your own judgments and connotations associated with the word virgin in your head, and we'll get to this later. So I recently finished reading Punishment and Crime, one of Dostoevsky's most famous work. Now, Dostoevsky can be regarded by many as one of the most influential writer, psychologist, and philosopher in the 19th century. Born in 1821, Russia, the author was eventually arrested and sentenced to death by the Russian Supreme Court for his writings which allegedly contain radical and anti-governmental ideologies. He's one of the great free thinkers that influenced one of the most famous German philosophers of all time, which many of you will know, Friedrich Nietzsche. Dostoevsky's work made me realize several things. This is a quote from one of his work, Brothers Karamazov, which perfectly sums up his philosophy on the nature of human desires. The world says you have needs, Satisfy them. You have as much right as the rich and the mighty. Don't hesitate to satisfy your needs. Indeed, expand your needs and demand more. This is the worldly doctrine of today. And they believe that this is freedom. The result for the rich is isolation and suicide. For the poor, envy and murder. In Punishment and Crime, we follow the protagonist Raskolnikov, a uni student who committed two murders. When Raskolnikov initially planned out his murder, his reasoning was clear. It was to escape poverty since he was a uni student and was struggling to make it by. But after the murder has taken place, over time, it was harder and harder for him to justify his motives. Was it really poverty that he was trying to escape? Or was he trying to prove himself to the world? To prove that he's capable of achieving great things and making an impact on the world like the great Napoleon? Or was it fame that he's seeking? Or better put, infamy? Or was it his delirium from his poor lifestyle choices that led him to murder? Was he, in fact, insane? Now, this book was written nearly 200 years ago, but it still holds true up to this day in regards to how we operate as humans. I guess as readers, we can relate so strongly to the character Raskolnikov, a murderer, even though we ourselves are not one. Because we realized 
the duality of man and how complex we ourselves really are. We cannot classify people as good or bad the same way as virgin or not virgin as two distinct qualities in people. Neither are inherently good or bad, neither are holy, virtuous or sinful and evil. There's a yin and yang in each one of us, the same with good and evil. It is an intrinsic quality of our being to be capable of both beneficent deeds and truly malevolent acts. We truly are not black and white. In regards to our needs and desires, we all have them. Love, intimacy, trust, and even pleasure. As a virgin who has never experienced sex, one is likely to feel a great sense of entitlement to sex. This is a universal truth. Young men, we have urges. We feel like we need to or have the right to experience sex, yet we cannot get it. This leads to envy, resentment, and feelings of contempt towards those who get it. If you don't get help in time or even get clapped in time, this may lead to murder, as Dostoevsky has put it. The sex-deprived man with unmet needs is truly destructive, both to himself and to society at large. Now you put a group of these men together, they can even decimate humanity. But as crime and punishment has shown me, the punishment for my crime, which thankfully has not occurred even at the lowest point of my life two years ago, I was the lowest in terms of my financial, my relationship, and my social status. I thought of ending it all and taking a few lives with me. The punishment here is not at the hands of the others, but it was within myself. I didn't understand myself and I didn't know what I wanted to get out of this life. That was the great cause of suffering. I realized I didn't want just to have sex or just to lose my virginity, I actually craved human connections with anyone, friends, strangers on the street, my family, anyone. I needed the validation and I also desired progress. As humans, we all crave progress. A virgin man as we see him today in the modern western world is an underdeveloped man. Are you fine? Yeah. You're fine then. Are you f***ing retarded? What the hell's the matter with you? Who has not developed that aspect of his life yet. And truly, we need to keep progressing or winning to have an existential reason. Otherwise, what is the point? Why didn't we just end it all together already? Now consider what truly makes you happy. If you have already lost your virginity, is it true that this feeling of losing your virginity for the first time is only fleeting? It only lasted a short time before you have more pressing priorities and things in your life that you also want to achieve pop up in your mind. Or maybe after that first initial one, you want more sex with more girls, different ages, different sizes, different tastes, different kinks. Is it true that by trying to eliminate suffering of not being able to have sex, of being lonely, of having blue balls, you end up creating more suffering by trying to chase after woman after woman all the time. This my friend is addiction and it's nothing different from taking drugs. On the other hand, for the virgins out there, ask yourself truly, what makes you happy? I know it's hard since you haven't experienced sex yet. I know because I haven't. But is it sex you truly want? You have to have a deeper understanding of your own being in order to be more at peace. Suffering is inevitable in life. It's a part of life. And by trying to eliminate suffering, you might end up creating more suffering. Say you want to go to the root of clubbing, being a pickup artist, dealing party trucks to girls and hiring prostitutes. These all require some sort of work and it can be suffering as well. Or it can be as subtle as lying, cheating or manipulating at the expense of your significant others just so you can have sex and lose your virginity. As I have said on my channel and as many others have said, just focus on loving yourself first. Once you've come to understand yourself and what your needs or wants are, I bet you wouldn't fixate on this idea of being a virgin so much. Why create more suffering for yourself when you don't really need to? From not being authentic, from putting up this fake persona and playing games that these pickup artists have taught you which will guarantee to get her into your bed. Not every conversation you have with a chick has got to gain you something like her number, her Instagram or her pussy. Just talk to them like normal people man and get to know them and try to understand each other to have a meaningful connection. Just stop being so damn weird all the time that's what I'm saying. Just be more chill and grounded. Just be a real nigger. Seriously, no one is making fun of you for being a virgin 
or for being a slut for that matter they couldn't care less that's because they are still trying to understand themselves they focused on themselves and what they want that's their god everyone got their own god that's god's plan for you actually that's why you were truly created and that's your purpose. So stop following these pick up red pill sigma bullshit. They haven't lived your life. They don't know shit. Stop following me as well. I don't know shit about your life. You've got to forge your own path. You can take advice from successful people. Sure. But maybe some of their advices cannot be applied to your own life. Because you're still the driver of your own life destination. And the car you drive or the road that you're driving on is completely different to theirs. So to all of my boys out there, don't be disheartened if you're still a so-called virgin. You just haven't had sex yet. That's all there is to the label. You're neither more holy or a lesser of a man than the guy next to you. It could very well just be a side quest for you in this game of life. And for some people, side quests are not detrimental in the completion of the game. For some, it may even a disguise to a greater final challenge, the final boss. But you gotta know yourself you got to be honest to your own self. What is it that you truly want? Is it sex? Is it validation? With that, I leave you all to reflect on this video. Stay strong and God bless.